What's up guys? Welcome to Trilogy Effect. Welcome to another Marvel movie. Um, today we're going to be ranking all four Thor movies starting from worst to best. In my opinion, these are all pretty good movies. So like if we were on a tier list, none of them would be under C tier. All four Thor movies are pretty good, some better than others. Before we jump into this, I just want to introduce myself. I'm Trilogy with Trilogy Effect. We do lots of gaming, movies, manga, all kinds of content on my channel. We have rankings, tier lists, all stuff. It's all sorted by playlist. You can check it out. I would really appreciate that. In the comments down below, let me know what's your favorite Thor movie. And with that said, like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the channel. That said, let's jump into it. Starting on number four, the least favorite movie for me in my opinion, and this is kind of a toss up. Number four and number three are really close in my opinion, but I'm going to put Thor one at number four. And hear me out, I know a lot of people hate Thor two, they hate it. But when I think about Thor one, it has a very simple story. This is phase one MCU. Even though Thor is like a space god, this movie is very low, low key. It's low, you know, the vision is there, it's still Thor, but they haven't figured out how they want to act with Thor. Like, is he like a, a, like he has this accent? Is he like a Viking? Is he nice? Is he funny? Is he goofy? They're still trying to figure out how they're going to characterize Thor is what I'm saying, basically. So, I know, Loki's the bad guy, and it just, it seems like it's, you know, to have a good Thor movie, you have to have Loki in there. You know, Loki, Heimdall, Thor, those type of people, um, they're essential in a Thor movie. But, you know, the character relationships, they're early on. His relationship with Jane, it's like love at first sight and whatnot. I do like the bar scene with um, Thor and Eric at the bar when they get drunk. The fight at the end, compared to other Thor fights with the Destroyer, it is kind of low-key compared to later fights in the franchise. With this being the first movie, it did set up a lot and it showed the interest that the audience had in Thor, which would grow to be one of the big three Thor, Iron Man, and Captain America. Thor is the only character with four movies now, and it could be because he's an immortal god that's hard to kill, but hey, Thor has the highest movie count. I'm sure Spider-Man will catch up to him, but at this time, Thor, one, is going to remain in fourth place. Like I said, my number three pick and my number four pick were very close. Number three is going to be Thor 2, The Dark World. This is going to have um, Thor, of course. He, this takes place after the Avengers. It's going to have Malekith, which is the dark elf villain played by Christopher Eccleston of Doctor Fame, Doctor Who fame. Um, this movie, the villain, the villain is lower than Loki. Loki was a better villain, even though we had like a bad villain about him, and it's revealed early on that he was the villain. His character relationship with Thor strengthened him as a villain. Malekith kind of falls flat. He sacrifices his own people. He wants to kill Odin. He wants to bring the universe into eternal darkness. Whatever. What does that even mean? But overall, besides the villain, everything else in this movie is above Thor 1. You know, I think Loki is better. Thor's characterization is better. His relationship with Jane, the dynamics of it is better. Heimdall gets more time on there. This movie, overall, the plot is just not... The plot is under Thor 1, but everything else, I think, carries it more. The death of his mother scene, where he hits him with the thunder, that was pretty cool. Loki setting him up, sending the, 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 the murderer to his mom's bedroom. His mom talking to him, he's not my father. Well, then am I not your mother? Damn. That's, it just tugs at the heartstrings, you know. The relationship in this movie is crazy. We see Thor, uh, we see Loki pretending not to be sad. And then it shows the, his true reactions. That was pretty cool. The fight at the end with the teleportation was cooler than the Destroyer fight. I like the teleportation concept. But overall, it doesn't reach the next two movies on our list. And that's why we're going to leave Do Thor, which is just a dully lit movie. All the planets that we go to in space. When... I don't know if this was before Guardians of the Galaxy, but Guardians of the Galaxy planets are bright and vibrant. And the Thor movies, the worlds we go to, they're just dark and dusty. And besides Asgard, it's just nothing appealing about space. Whereas the first movie, we never leave Earth. We actually go places in this movie. And I do appreciate that since Thor is a space Viking. But that's why we're going to put Thor, The Dark World, in third place. Coming in for our number three pick is going to be the latest Thor movie. This is going to be Thor, Love and Thunder, fresh out the theater. I just saw this movie last night. 
and I quite enjoyed it. I did think it was a little overhyped because there were people out there talking about it was the best Phase 4 movie. I'm talking like, so have you not seen Spider-Man No Way Home? Have you not seen Multiverse of Madness? Because those movies were great Marvel movies. Spider-Man No Way Home is like my favorite Spider-Man movie. And I don't care if it plays off nostalgia. And then, hey, Doctor vs. Multi of Madness, that's probably like a top 10 movie for Marvel out of 40 movies, you know. So that's still very high. These movies were great movies. Thor, Love and Thunder was good. I was afraid they were going to kill my, my girl Valkyrie. I didn't like her characterization in this movie as much as Ragnarok. But, hey... You got responsibilities. And then I, w I was familiar slightly with the Jane Foster Thor comics where she gets cancer, Thor is unworthy, Thor loses an arm. But that was pretty much the extent of what I knew. I knew whenever, I knew she was on chemo and whether, whenever she used the hammer, it was basically resetting her chemo treatment so she wasn't getting better, which they do something similar in this movie. But I was surprised they gave her cancer. I was like, dang. That's dark. You know, a lot of times they don't like to put those realistic um, themes into the Marvel movies, like Iron Man being an alcoholic. <laughs> they just don't do that kind of stuff. But I enjoyed this movie. I mean, the I was glad that the black and white sequence was not too long because I'm really not a fan of black and white movies. Gore, you know, they try to make a sympathetic villain where, you know, he wants to kill the gods because the gods didn't help him when his daughter died. But I didn't really care about that. You know, it's just... It, I guess it didn't make sense for you to kill all the gods after one god finessed you, you know? You know, it doesn't really make sense. But I did like to see the, the interactions between Jane and Thor. It was refreshing to see them acting different because Thor is usually, you know, the god and Jane is usually the mortal. But in this movie, they were more equals, you know? I thought that was really cool. I did like this decision ultimately that Jane decided to be a hero and even though it cost her a lot in the end, I thought it was, you know, it was in character. It was, you know, they didn't force it. It seemed like something Jane from movie one, if she had the power to do, would have done. And overall, I like this movie a lot. We got to see Eternity kind of from the comic books, which is pretty cool. They didn't really touch on how the wish thing works. Like if Thor knows about the wishes, why doesn't he just go back, make some wishes, bring back his brother, bring back his dad, bring back his mom, bring back his country, bring back his people, bring back his hammer. Like, he could just keep spamming these wishes, but he doesn't. So I'm not really sure the justification for that, you know? I don't know. And then as far as that goes, it's not a Thor movie unless someone dies. Thor has the saddest story of all Marvel movies. It's so messed up. Like, it's so messed up, man. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's all I have to say on Thor Love and Thunder. I wanted to speak on it a little bit longer. Since it is the newest movie, I didn't want to spoil too much, so... That's pretty much it, guys, on Thor Love and Thunder. I don't think it's the number one movie, but it's definitely better than the first two movies. Taika Waititi's characterization of Thor is perfect. Up next for our number one, you know there's only one movie left. The last and the best movie for Thor in his franchise is going to be Thor Ragnarok. Thor Ragnarok was pretty good. I mean, it had the Hulk in it, so we got the mini Planet Hulk art because we're never going to get that in movies. Um, we got the, the introduction of Korg, Meek, Valkyrie. We got Jeff Goldblum as the Grandmasters, the planet of Sakaar, all of the, the gladiator matches. Those are pretty cool. The humor on this movie is perfect. Whereas I think Thor Love and Thunder overdoes it a little bit. They use humor at the expense of the movie, which is very common in the Marvel movies. But, you know, I think the humor in this movie is perfect. And I really missed out on the Hulk in Love and Thunder. Like, where is the Hulk? I felt like he would have been a perfect addition. But with us now having the Professor Hulk, I doubt we'll ever get those kind of Hulk, Thor, Valkyrie vibes again just because Banner is in control of the Hulk. But, the, I mean, the plot was great. Hela as a villain was very great. I didn't think, I didn't like how they killed his friends off with, like, no fanfare. I did like that we finally got to see the return of Lady Sif. In the um, in Thor: Love and Thunder, even though she didn't do anything the whole movie, I was hoping she was actually going to have a role in the movie, maybe like a love triangle type thing. It would have been cliche, but I feel like it would have been better than what they actually did with her. And then Heimdall has a son out out of nowhere. Like what? I just felt like there were a lot of contrivances in Thor: Love and Thunder that I didn't feel in in Thor: Ragnarok. I mean, the plot of the movie kind of made. I mean, it made much more sense. The only thing I could nitpick is how did 
Hulk in a plane end up in space, you know? That didn't really make sense. Um, I, I This movie was really great. And if it wasn't for us celebrating at the end and then Thanos pulling up and knowing that he kills half the people, kills Loki, and blows up the spaceship at that hopeful end, this would have been a much more greater movie. But it does seem like a lot of it is in vain, knowing that at the end of the day, Thanos is going to pull up and kill all of the Asgardians. Besides that, guys, that's my rankings for the Thor movies. What's your rankings? Let me know down below. What did you think of Thor Love and Thunder? And please subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I'll catch you guys next time. Trilogy out. Peace. I love the hustle, man. I be feeling like one of them ball playing, like bird or magic or something. But if I leave, the fans still gonna love me, man?